Hello everyone. Um, my name is Sar, and I do hardware, software, and things like that. Um, and I'm going to talk about uh, Verilog, and we're going to go through some examples. And um, this is probably going to be the shortest introduction to Verilog ever, uh, but uh, it's okay. We're going to we're going to be around here. I'm just going to give you. Uh, what I think are the main um, conceptual things and, 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 and things that you could take in order to change your mental model of what um, designing for hardware is compared to what you might be experienced with um, sequential code. So uh, these are the main things of, of the, my presentation and then we're going to go through syntax. Um, there are a lot of resources online. I know the connections aren't that good uh, now, but um, uh, if you get to one page, I have, I have a, a pointer there at the end of the presentation. If you can get to the GitHub uh, repository, then I'm presenting off the wiki page, the intro, introduction to Verilog. So it's, it's all there. Um, if you can get to it and, uh, and keep it and follow, follow through, that would be, uh, that would be good. Um, right. It, 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 first, I want to ask a few questions. Who's, who's designed for FPGAs before? Okay. Who's designed with Verilog? Right. <laughs> Good. Uh, <laughs> who's designed uh, sequential code, regular C code, uh, and so on? Good. Um, so I, I, I'm assuming that's it. well. Next question: Who's done it for um, embedded embedded? software embedded chips good all right um, so so we're already at a, at a, at a, at a good start uh, because um, when we initially thought about this it was, it was more for you know make, make a presentation for for audience that haven't done anything uh, uh, any any programming before and that's kind of hard so I'm assuming a certain a certain level of understanding about um, you know, bits and, um, and, and, and and these sort of things. Right, so let's start. Uh, Verilog. Oh, uh, I just wanted to recap uh, from, from Omer's excellent presentation about the, the flow of development with FPGAs. And I have a slightly different diagram, and, uh, but it's essentially the same as what Omer was presenting. Uh, what I, the reason I wanted to have this on first is that it introduces terminology that I'm going to use and perhaps you, you'll need to point to when you have a problem with your code and you just don't know what to name uh, the stage that you're at. But as you can see, the, the HDL of Verilog is, is, is an HDL, a hardware description language, is there at the, at the top. And then it goes through the synthesis that produces a netlist um, and then it goes to implementation, which is the place in route. Uh, different companies call it different things. Uh, you'll see Fitter is, is one of the uh, um, phases in the Altera tools. Uh, that produces a bitstream. And a bitstream is a little bit like uh, a firmware that you, that you create for a microcontroller. A little bit like that. You can, you can mentally think about it that way. And then you program it onto uh, the FPGA in order to give it the instructions of what you want to do. To do. An FPGA, it, you can treat it, as, as Omar said, as, as a black box of inputs and outputs, and you are creating a program, you're describing the hardware that uh, performs a digital function of those inputs and produces that particular output. Um, then we have simulation on, on the left, my left, um, and we're uh, now we're not facing it. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you have behavioral simulation. That just takes your code and simulates it. There's no timing information there. And then there is post synthesis simulation and post place and route or post implementation simulation. We don't really worry about that, but that factors in the actual physical properties of the device. Um, but the simple stuff that we're going to do in this workshop is not, we're only going to deal with behavioral simulation. Um, 
then on, on the right side there is the, uh, the software that you might write for, uh, for your embedded processor. You'll compile it and then they'll go into the storage uh, for that compiled code in an embedded processor that you might have on the FPGA or you might have designed into your FPGA. Um, and then the finishing files, that's, uh, I'll, leave, I'll leave that. Uh, finally, there is the, the step of verification. And again, we're not going to do this in this workshop, but it's possible to, um, sit, to, to look at signals inside of the FP, running inside of the FPGA itself. And um, the, Xilinx call this uh, a program that you could do that. You can basically embed a wrapper around particular parts of your design, and then through JTAB, which is a serial interface, you can see on your monitor what's actually happening inside the FPGA. Xilinx calls it uh, chip scope, uh, Altera calls it si signal tab. If, uh, if you're going to continue after this workshop, I recommend that you get familiar with those. It's really uh, a really powerful and, um, a and a good way to, to look at the signals inside of the FPGA if, if, if something is, your simulation works, but your design doesn't actually work. Right, so this, this is the, um, the, uh, kind of the basics. So Verilog is a, is a hardware description language, and that's exactly uh, what we're doing. We're describing hardware in, uh, in code. Right, you have to think about the, 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 everything that you're writing is going to be translated into physical, uh, physical parts, physical logic elements that are inside of the FPGA. Okay? There are other languages, VHDL, um, Omer mentioned schematics, no, 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 nobody seriously uses schematics, so I, just, I know it's tempting, but just forget it. <laughs> um, it's not worth, it's not worth it, just... Uh, Invest your time in one of the, in one of the HDLs because the schematics are very limited. Uh, they're they're clunky. So you know it's really not worth your time. Um, building blocks. Again, just to recap, we have wires. Go, wires just connecting. They don't have any memory. Okay. Remember, wires don't have any memory. Just connecting. You can't dynamically assign things to a wire it has the value of what's driving it. And the driving it usually is either an external um, driver or something internally that has storage that is driving the thing. Now, storage could mean, could mean it's tied to one or zero or to a, uh, some other logic element uh, that is keeping the, the, uh, the, 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 lo the, the logic state. Right? Then we have uh, edge-triggered Flip-flops or registers, that's, that's again a fundamental building block. Every time you, uh, a clock is, get uh, a clock edge arrives to the flip-flop, whatever is on the, uh, the D port and the data port is being, uh, uh, it will be presented on the Q port, on the output. Only on that clock edge is data change. And then you can also think about, about it as, a, as an element that has a chip enable on an individual flip-flop that will usually, usually be a chip enable, um, which turns it on and off. You never, ever in FPGAs gate a clock. You, can, you, you never say um, disable this clock. You only disable logic. Uh, that it will as you as you go you'll say oh yeah but I want I, I want to stop the clock you don't you don't you never do that um, and then uh, lookup tables it's it's similar to what you would know as a lookup table from from regular programming but it's very it's very small um, uh, FPGAs will have a four or five or six input lookup table so um, uh, 16 32 64 bit lookup table. Uh, those lookup tables are quite sophisticated. Um, they can do various things like be, be implemented as a shift register, but you won't get to that level of uh, needing to think about them uh, as, as um, um, on, on their own, but I just want you to realize that this is what your logic is uh, implemented in. Um, 
And in fact, FPGAs don't really have AND gates or NOT gates or OR gates inside of them. They have lookup tables that implement um, whatever logic uh, that you want inside of those lookup tables. Okay? So if you'd say A and uh, B, there's not going to be an AND gate. There's going to be um, a, uh, two inputs to a lookup table with, with the, with the uh, four possible outcomes of an AND gate. Okay? Basically. Uh, that, that's what lookup tables uh, are used. Um, and then you have large uh, memory blocks, and those are, but I have large in quotations because it's not quite as large as, as you might be used to. Um, they're more in the area of 18 kilobits, 36 kilobits. Um, uh, these are for the Xanax device, so I'm not quite sure what's, uh, what's uh, how, how, how large the Altera ones are, but it's more or less the same. Again, your logic that you're describing, the hardware that you're describing, is mapped to those three fundamental elements inside of the FPGA. Okay, just, again, keep that in mind. Now, probably the most, the most, uh, the largest shift in your thinking would have to come from this. Uh, there is, it's, it, the, everything runs concurrently. On, on a clock that is always there. And there is no concept of main in, um, in, in hardware design. It, order doesn't matter for most part. Um, and we'll get to, to where, where you could make it so order does matter. But um, there, is, there is no main. The, the, the order of declarations doesn't really come into it. Everything is, is going in parallel. You're just controlling which part you want to see at which point. Okay. Um, the other thing that, that I usually uh, demonstrate physically is that when you, you you think about sequential code, you go top down, one command after another, and when you're going to uh, write a, a variable, you need to think left to right. Okay. You need to think. Um, everything is running all the time like this. And which part in my code, wherever it may be, is I, 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 want, I want to sort of execute or look at the outputs of. That's, that's how you need to think about it. Right, the very, very basics, uh, this is syntax. So you have, um, some of these things will look very familiar. Um, they are, uh, they'll behave similarly. Um, but I'll, I'll have to say this at the beginning. I am very, a very conservative um, Verilog uh, author. I, I write things very explicitly and I use the lowest level of, uh, of functionality that Verilog affords me. And uh, there's, there's, a, there's technical reasons for that. That's it. But very much the code patterns, because they're unreadable. Uh, I could try, yes, uh, control plus should do it. Is this better? Uh, this is probably the, the, the largest I can make it up. Um, so uh, I, will, I will talk about in my code uh, that you'll see later, we'll have a uh, certain um, instructions in it. You could do things differently. Uh, feel free to explore. For example, I would I would rarely use a for loop, although that would that is possible. Um, I will rarely use integers, which uh, is also possible. Um, and uh, again, the reasons are are technical and practical, uh, but I won't get into them because uh, there's there's a lot of background to that. Um, but, you know, whatever I show you, if you see somewhere else that somebody's done things differently, feel free to try. Right. Uh, that define defines constants. It will basically replace anything that uh, um, you put, uh, you define here, rounds is equal to four. If you're in your code, you put um, um, the symbol, uh, this inverted, um, 
back ticket. So thank you. Um, and round in there, I'll just replace it with the number four. Uh, then, uh, and these are global, global constants. Uh, then you can have uh, local parameters, and then uh, you can declare uh, whether uh, registers. These are the storage elements and their width. So here you're de declaring a register of this size. So it could be three to zero. So it's a four-bit register. Similarly with wires. Um, you can name wires that way, um, again, with, uh, with the variable width, with the width that you want. Um, so, Verilog functionality comes in in modules, and this is how you declare a module. You say, um, I want this module, the module name, and the inputs and outputs, and the ports, the ports name. So, um, the connections to a module is called a port. This is how you interface with it. It's like a function um, where you, you give it variables. Um, again, in Verilog, you're connecting wires to that um, module. So you're giving it a, um, a, a wire name. The, um, I prefer, this is a newer style. You'd see a different style mostly, uh, which is, comes next. Um, it's just, uh, there will be, th this top style is, there's just fewer um, characters, but uh, the more traditional way is to say, is to first declare the module, what are the ports, and then uh, inside of the module, say, uh, right after the, the declaration, you say input, output, and uh, <laughs> right. So, um, choose either one, these are just fewer characters. Okay. Instantiating modules. Um, so you created a module, now you want to use it, you have to instantiate it. Okay? So, um, you say which model name, module name, sorry, and then you give it the instance name, and then you say, dot, the port name, remember we've seen the port name declaration over there, and then which wire you want to connect to. Now sometimes you don't have to say which wire, you can give it a register and the wire will be given, will be automatically placed there. Um, or you can name, name the wire. Um, sometimes you'll get complaints, different tools that handle it differently. Uh, okay. Now, you need to assign values to registers. Um, and you do that by these either blocking assignments or non-blocking assignments. Blocking assignments is an equal. And by blocking, it means that it is effectively sequential. So we will not execute the, the, the commands after. We will first execute this and then execute this, and then execute this. Remember I, uh, the back tick thing? That's, that would be four, if, if we go back a little bit. Um, Non-blocking assignments will, uh, it, it's, it's uh, less than equal, uh, will put, will execute these two together, uh, together at the same time, okay? This is what we use. The only time you'd use this is in simulation, where you really want, time-wise, you want to, um, to toggle signals, and we'll see that. You only use this in synthesizable code, code that is going for the FPGA. Okay. Um, I know you can, you can use blocking assignments. I never do, and I don't recommend you to do that. Uh, get used to using uh, a non-blocking assignments. Again, okay, values uh, in bits. Always think in bits. That's that's the fundamental unit. You don't. Um, there always be zero and one. Um, some caveats with that. Uh, these represent the same sequence of digits. All of these are the same, okay. or will be. 
in the in the in your um, the, co the code that is then going to, into synthesis, this will look the same. Okay, you can do a is equal to ten, a is equal to four bits in binary one zero one zero, or four bits in in um, decimal ten, or in hex a. Now this is a concatenation mechanism, so I'm saying here two bits one zero concatenated with two bits. Right, that's uh, that's that's the end of the uh, brief intro. Um, there is a concise intro to uh, find same machines here. Um, if you can get to it. Okay, now when things don't go, don't work. You need to ask yourself: Is it working in simulation? You need to simulate. Okay. Uh, you need to ask yourself, is a clock working and reaching the logic? And uh, that, that is quite a common, common thing. You'd, you'd, you'd think that you sort of wire things correctly, but uh, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Uh, try to connect the clock to a, an output that you could see. Or if you have a scope nearby, then that you could actually see the clock frequency and uh, to see if, if, if it lights up an LED, something like that. Um, now, also ask yourself, is my logic still there? Now this might seem strange, but in the FPGA world, if you're not using logic, it's going to be trimmed out by the tools. Right? So if you don't actually have, if you can't trace a connection between an input to an output, it will be taken out of your design. It won't be there anymore. So you need to think about your design and say, is, is the reset actually being used to produce an output, to make a difference in the design? If it doesn't, it'll be taken out, and in some cases it'll cascade, so all your logic is, is gone. And then there's just nothing there. And you know, the, the information about that will be buried somewhere where you, you, you have a hard time finding it. Now, don't freak out if you get a gazillion warnings. Uh, it's perfectly normal in this world of FPGA tools. Um, this simple design has 103 warnings, 104 warnings uh, that we're going to run. That's the very basic. Um, unfortunately, this is only right when things go uh, when, thing, when your design is working. Now I know it sounds like a Rumsfeld unknowns kind of statement, but um, this is unfortunate. Sometimes there will be a warning buried inside of the hundreds uh, of your design that you'll have to dig up if you get frustrated um, and then you can't figure it out. But again, it's not two, three warnings that you have to keep looking at. It's 103 or, or 200 warnings or 300, um, and there's not a whole lot you can do about it. That's just the nature of these tools. They're not very good. Um, other than searching uh, for error messages, the electronic stack exchange is a good um, resource. The stack overflow, the stack overflow has Verilog and FPJ stuff. A concise but comprehensive guide to Verilog is, is on this link. Um, it's, it's pretty good. It's a bit old, it's about 12 years old, but you don't need more than that. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty good, so uh, um, very concise, to the point, explains things. Um, 